Hello, my name is Vicky Ratcliffe and together with my supervisor David Reby, we've been investigating whether domestic dogs show hemispheric biases in response to the different components in human speech. Speech is a complex signal and when we speak we transmit not only verbal information but also information about ourselves such as our gender, our identity, our personality and even our emotional state. When we hear speech, meaningful verbal information encoded in the phonemic variation of the signal is processed primarily in the left hemisphere of the brain in most people. In contrast, the speaker-related information, such as the uh, emotional prosody, is processed primarily in the right hemisphere. But what happens when animals hear speech? Well, we know that animals also show hemispheric biases in response to their own species' vocalisations. But what we didn't know was whether species which have been strongly exposed to speech, such as the domestic dog, would also show hemispheric biases in response to the different components in the speech signal. In order to test this, we used a head orienting design which is illustrated here. In this design we have two speakers which are placed either side of the dog and a sound is played from both speakers at the same time so that it enters both of the dog's ears equally. The sound input is then transferred from each ear across to the opposite hemisphere of the brain and the hemisphere which is more specialised in processing this content works more efficiently so the sound is heard more clearly from the opposite ear. So if a dog turns to their left in response to the sound, this provides a behavioural indication that the right hemisphere is more specialised in processing the information in the sound that they are responding to. In our study, each dog heard only one sound, and we looked for consistencies across all of the dogs exposed to the same type of sound in their head-turning responses. We had 10 different sound conditions in total. Eight of these were related to human speech and two were non-vocal controls. In our speech conditions, we manipulated the signals by either enhancing or removing certain information to see if this influenced the direction of the dog's head-turning responses. We first tested whether dogs would show lateralised response bias to meaningful verbal information encoded at the segmental level of the speech signal. To do this, we started with a familiar learned command and we enhanced the salience of the verbal content by either removing the speaker's intonation, which reduces the emotional content in the signal, Come on then. or we converted the sound into sine wave speech. What this does is replace the speaker's formants with sine wave tones and removes all of the other information from the signal, so that whilst the meaningful verbal content is retained, all of the speaker-related information is removed and the speech does not sound voice-like. We found that dogs showed a significant left hemispheric bias in response to these signals, even when the speaker's accent was strongly unfamiliar. Come on, Zen. However, if we increase the salience of verbal content which was not meaningful to the dogs, either by reordering the phonemes in the original command, Follow Ken. or by using foreign speech we found that they instead showed a significant right hemispheric bias which suggests that verbal content must not only be present but also meaningful to the dogs to elicit stronger left hemispheric activation. Coupled with our finding that dogs also showed a significant right hemispheric bias in response to positive emotional speech in which the verbal content had been removed this suggests that the right hemisphere of the brain is specialised in processing the speaker-related information in the voice. To summarise, we found that dogs show a left hemispheric bias when the salience of meaningful verbal content is increased in the speech signal. In contrast, they show a right hemispheric bias when the verbal content is either meaningless to them or removed altogether from the signal, thus enhancing the salience of the speaker-related information. This is particularly interesting because it demonstrates that dogs separately process different information in a speech signal and the way they do this is very similar to the way we do it.